Okay, and we're back. So today, uh, we're going to look at dynamics and some problems, uh, solve some problems, and see how we do. So the first question we're going to do, these are all involving friction. So the first question is number 30. It says, if you use a horizontal force of 30 newtons, to slide a 12 kilogram wooden crate across a floor at a constant velocity, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the floor? So what are we given? Let's write down what we're given here. We're given that we have an applied force of 30 newtons. And we have also that the mass is equal to 12 kilograms. And um, we're also told that it's a constant. It's moving at a constant velocity. Now this translates into acceleration being equal to 0. Um, and the question is asking, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So we have to find mu k equals question mark. So let's start out by doing the free body diagram first. So we draw the free body diagram. Here's our applied force. Here is our friction force. And yes, we do have gravity but it is negated by a normal force acting up. So these vertical forces cancel out. The only force we're, forces we're concerned about are the horizontal forces. So let's write down our dynamics equation. Summation of the forces is equal to F net. Then we have our positive direction this way. Why? Well, because I'm pulling it in, or it's being pulled in this direction, in the direction of the applied force. So I have applied force minus friction. And that's equal to MA. Now, I also know that the acceleration is zero. So MA is zero. Therefore, applied force is going to be equal to the friction force. Now, the applied force is given. That's equal to 30 newtons. Um, so now what's my equation for friction? Well, my equation for friction is friction equals mu k fn. But since Fn is equal to Mg, I can rewrite this as mu k Mg. And so then, I'm, I'm looking for this, but let me write down the equation first. So my applied force is uh, 30 equals mu k Mg. And now, I will divide both sides by Mg and I'll get 30 divided by mg equals mu k. I could have left the I could have left it like this and then did this same thing. Uh, in any case the answer is going to be 30 divided by the mass is 12 times 9.8. So the answer ends up being 0 0.26. And that's mu k. So that was, that was question number 30. Okay, next question states, 
uh, a force of 40 newtons accelerates a 5 kilogram block. So I'm going to write down the applied force is equal to 40 and the mass is equal to 5 kilos. And it says that the acceleration is 6 meters per second squared along a horizontal surface. How large is the friction force? So let's write down friction force equals question mark. And then part B says, what is the coefficient of friction? Mu k equals question mark. So that's part A, and that's part B. Let's again start with our free body diagram. There's the object. And here is my applied force pulling the object with a force of 40 newtons. Now we also have friction in the opposite direction. Friction is always, always acts opposite to the direction of motion. I'm also going to say that this is my positive direction. And so if I write down my summation of forces, always I always do this for dynamics problems is equal to F net. Now I say applied force minus friction, because friction's in the opposite direction to positive, is equal to MA. In this case, I have A. But the first part of the question says, what's my friction force? Now, I do know that the equation for friction is equal to mu Fn or mu mg, and this is mu, mu k, but I don't know what mu is. In fact, that's part b. So I can't solve it from here. But what I can do is I can look at this equation here and say, which, what is my unknown variable here? Well, I know m, I know a, and I know applied force. There's only one unknown, and that's friction. I can solve for it now. So let me rearrange the equation. Let me take this term to the other side of the equal sign, and I'll get positive force of friction, because it's negative on this side. And then let me take this ma and take it to the other side, and it'll be negative. So I'll get applied force minus ma is equal to friction. And now let me put my values in. This is 40 minus uh, 5 from here times A, which is also here. And that's going to be 5 times 6 is 30. 40 minus 30 is 10. And so 10 newtons is my friction force. So I've, I've, I was able to solve part A. Now I can use this equation here to solve for part B. If I solve for mu k algebraically first, I get it's equal to friction divided by mg. And now, if I use my friction force, which I've calculated here in part A, divided by mg, I end up with, I end up with 0.2 as my coefficient of friction and part B is done as well. So that was pretty easy. Okay? Okay. Next question is 34. Let's try it out. A 225 kilogram crate M equals 220, uh, f sorry, 225 kilogram crate. And uh, it says it is pushed horizontally with a force of 710. So the applied force here is 710 newtons. Okay, here's my free body diagram. 
applied force, and it's 710 newtons. And then it says, if the coefficient of friction is 0.2, calculate the acceleration of the, cr of the crate. So if mu k equals 0.2, find the acceleration, question mark. So the free body diagram is going to have friction going to the left, opposite to the direction of motion, and I'm going to say that that's positive. Uh, I do have normal force here and gravity, but they do cancel each other out. Uh, so when I write the summation of the forces, as I always do, equals F net, I'm going to get uh, applied force being positive, minus force of friction, and that's going to equal MA. Now, I want to find A, so I will divide the, the entire equation by M. But at the same time, I have to recognize that the friction equation is mu k m g. So I can substitute this wherever I have friction here. So I'll write it again. Applied force minus mu k m g equals m a. Now I will divide by m to get to isolate a. So I'll get applied force divided by m minus mu k mg divided by m equals a. And I don't need to write ma because I'm going to divide by m. And so now, notice there's a nice little simplification here. The m's cancel out in this equation. And then, okay, so let's uh, plug in our numbers now. We know that the applied force is 710, so we'll go 710 divided by, and we know what the mass is, it's uh, 225, divided by 225 minus mu k, which is 0.2, times g, which is 9.8. And by the way, since the masses are gone now, that's all that's left. And now we can plug it through our calculator. So we get approximately 1.2 meters per second squared for the acceleration. And we're done. Okay, so the next question is number 35. It says, you are driving a 2,500 kilogram car at a constant speed of 14 meters per second. So we know the mass is 2,500 kilograms, and we know that the velocity is 14 meters per second. This is given. Now, it says it's a, it's a constant speed and um, initially, and then it says along an icy uh, but straight level road. As you approach an intersection, the traffic light turns red, oh no, and you slam on the brakes. Your wheels lock and the tires begins skidding. So we're sliding now. And the car slides to a halt a distance of 25 meters away. Now when it says to a halt, it means now we know that this is velocity was our initial velocity and our final velocity is going to be zero. And also when it says 25 meters away, we know that delta D is equal to 25 meters. Uh, the question asks, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So what is the kinetic coefficient of friction? Now, if you'll notice this problem, this is actually many of the things that the question is giving us, like the delta D and the VI and the VF, this is a kinematics problem. But 
this is also a dynamics problem. The only way we're going to get from the world of dynamics to kinematics is through the secret bridge of acceleration. So we know now that in order for us to solve this problem, we're going to have to find the acceleration in the dynamics problem. Okay? So let's start on the dynamic side, because that's how we always start these problems. And let's draw our free body diagram. Here it is. There's my, there's my car. I like drawing boxes. And um, we've, now the question is, do we have an applied force? Now this car is uh, sliding to a stop. Okay, so it's kinetic friction, not static, because the wheels aren't rolling. But as it's okay, so if this my calculator here is the car and this is the ground, it's sliding to a stop. As you're sliding to a stop, is the person in the car pressing on the accelerator? Answer no. There is no applied force forward on this car. There's only one force on this car, and that is the force of friction. Many times students will have a hard time understanding how the car is moving forward and which direction is forward. We'll say this direction is forward. How is the car moving in this positive direction if there's no force in that direction? And the answer is simple. It's because it has an initial velocity in that positive direction. So in other words, the car's velocity will decrease all the way down to zero coming to a halt, as it's stated in the question. And the only force on the car is the force of friction, because the person is applying the brakes and the car is sliding. Now that we know this, now obviously there is going to be normal force and gravity, but those will cancel each other out. So let's write summation of the forces is equal to F net. You'll see now that we only have one force, and that's the friction force. But please note my positive direction. So I'm going to write negative force of friction equals MA. And I put negative on that because it's acting in the negative direction. This is important. Um, now, I can substitute in the equation for friction, and I'll write it over here so we can all remember what it is. And so now I can say negative mu mg equals ma. Notice a lovely simplification. The mass cancels out. So I get negative mu g equals a. Now I say to myself, okay, well, can I fig what am I looking for? I'm looking for mu k, there it is, but I don't have acceleration. So how do I solve this? Well, you should recognize at this point that we're going to need to cross the bridge between dynamics, which is what we're doing right now, and kinematics. And, it, and let's take this acceleration with us, but not as a number, but rather as an equation. So I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to say, okay, this is the world of dynamics. Okay. And now let's cross the bridge into kinematics. And let's take with us this equation for acceleration. Now, what are my kinematics equations? Well, I have delta D equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT. I have V final equals AT plus uh, VI. These are not very helpful for me because I don't have anything to do with time. There's no time given in the question anywhere. However, there is one more equation in kinematics, this one. 
And this one is very helpful. So that's the one I want. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D. And do I have V final? Yep. Do I have V initial? Yep. Do I have A? Well, not exactly. I have A as an equation. So kind of yes, right? Um, and do I have delta D? Yes, I do. There it is. So let us substitute this equation in to A. So if I do that, I get V final squared equals V initial squared plus two times negative mu G Remember, this is all being multiplied, times delta d. And now, I have everything in this equation except for mu. And mu is what I want to solve for. So if I can solve for mu here, I'm done. So now comes my algebra skills. Notice this negative 1 is being multiplied here. So I can factor it out and change the equation into this I just simply uh, put the negative multiplication by negative 1 here instead of being added I just subtract now because negative 1 uh, times 2 is negative 2 then I can isolate mu by subtracting uh, Vf from both sides, sorry, Vi from both sides. And I'll divide by negative 2g delta d. Negative 2g delta d, and that's going to give me mu. See, so I just isolate the term and then divide by everything that, that I'm not solving for, which is the 2, the g, and the delta d. And now I can stick my numbers in here. My final velocity is 0. My initial velocity was 14 squared. And I'm dividing by 2 times 9.8 times 25. And now when I do that, I get an answer of 0 0.4. And that is my kinetic coefficient of friction. And I mean, this isn't the only way I could have done this. Perhaps the, um, I, but it's fine. I like to solve problems uh, in a consistent manner. And so that's why I did the, the, the dynamic side first. Um, perhaps I could have, the other thing I could have done Another way to solve this problem is I could have started with the kinematics problem. And I could have, because uh, I have my final velocity, I have my initial velocity, and I have my delta d, I could have solved for a. Once I found a on the kinematic side, I could have taken that over to this side and solved for mu like that. So just to, just to be clear here, instead of taking an, an equation with me across this bridge from dynamics to kinematics, if I started with kinematics, I could have solved for A from this equation here and said A equals V final squared minus V initial squared divided by 2 times delta D, right, from here. And now I have 0 minus 14 squared divided by 2 times um, 25. And that's going to give me negative 3.92 meters per second squared. So now that I, if I start, now this is starting with kinematics. I could now solve for my acceleration. Then, once I have my acceleration, okay, once I have this acceleration, I could now move this over just a little bit so you can see here 
the equation I derived from the dynamic side, right? If I now do the dynamic side and I get this equation for A, I now can assign, I can say, hey, negative mu g equals A, therefore negative mu g equals, let's just write like this, uh, negative 3.92, which I solved from here, right? And so now I could solve for mu simply by going mu equals negative 3.92 divided by uh, negative g, which is going to give me uh, negative 3.92 over negative 9.8. And that's going to give me 0. 0.4 again, same answer as it should. OK? So perhaps in, maybe that's like easier algebraically instead of bringing along an equation across the bridge. But in any case, whichever way you decide to do it, whether you start on the kinematic side and take acceleration over as a number, or whether you start on the dynamic side and take acceleration across as an equation, either way, um, you can solve it. So my final answer, either way, is uh, 0.4. OK, the next question is 37. It says that a, this question says, a sled of mass 50 kilograms, so m equals 50 kg, is um, pulled along a flat snow-covered ground. The static friction coefficient is 0.3. So mu s equals 0.3. And it says that the kinetic friction coefficient is 0.1. Yep. Kinetic friction is less than static friction. And um, then it says, what does the sled weigh? OK. So that's easy. Part A is, what is the weight of the sled? The weight is the force of gravity. We know the mass. And we just multiply that by 9.8. And we get the weight. That's 490 newtons. And that's the weight. Part B says, what force will be needed to start the sled moving? OK, so if we draw the free body diagram, we have an, oops, we have an applied force. And we have our friction force static. In order for this object to start moving, remember what our um, graph, our friction kind of graph looks like is like this. We need to get to this point, the maximum static. And the maximum static friction is equal to mu s mg. That's what this applied force must be equal to in order to get this thing to move. So therefore, the applied force must be equal to this force. So, and since we know what mg is already, since we calculated that already, we can just go 0.3 times 490. And that is 147. So that is the, the force needed to start moving. OK. And then part C says, um, so let's put a box around this. That's part B. Part C now says, 
what force is needed to keep the sled moving at a constant velocity. So it's the same concept, but now the applied force doesn't need to be as large. Be Oops, this is friction, but it's kinetic friction now. So now we're in here, and that's the kinetic part. And in order to calculate that one, it's the same equation. It's friction kinetic is equal to mu k mg. But now, again, the applied force, the pulling force, needs to be at least as big as the friction. So that means it's this equation. But now, instead of multiplying by mg, which we know is 490 again, we just multiply by point one because we know our kinetic is point one. So we go point one times 490 and that's going to give us 49 newtons. Notice that is the force to keep moving. To keep it moving 49 newtons is less than 147, which we require to start moving from rest. OK? And now part D says, once moving, what total force must be applied to the sled to accelerate it at 3 meters per second squared? So if the acceleration is 3 meters per second, what must the applied force be? So we'll draw the free body diagram again. And this time we'll have here and we'll have friction going left. We'll say to the right is positive. And again, we'll have summation of the forces is equal to F net. And we'll have applied force minus friction force equals MA. And now, notice we're solving, or we want to find the applied force. So we'll simply solve for this by saying it's equal to MA plus force of friction. And in this case, force of friction is going to be equal to mu kmg. And I can do one final mathematical simplification, and that is factor out the m. And there's my answer. Now let's plug in the values. My mass from the beginning of this was uh, 50. So oops, let's undo that guy, push that up. 50 and the acceleration that we were given was 3. So let's go 3 plus and the mu k was 0.1 from way up at the top right there. So 0.1 times g. So that's 0.1 times g is 0.98. 3 plus 0.98 is 3.98, so 50 times 3.98 gives us an answer of 199 newtons. So that is the applied force required to accelerate the object at 3 meters per second squared. And that's the end of these questions. Hope they were helpful.